Eric Strong, we're Cindy Dole. This is Home Wizards. Happy afternoon to you as we, I know, I know, it's not even December yet, but we're thinking Christmas because there's so much to get ready for. There's no way around it. Even though it's like 85 degrees out, <laughs> you see it all over, don't you? All it the is. stores, all the Christmas music. And it's They're fun. 24-hour Christmas music on K-Earth. the way. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah so we uh, just this past week visited uh, this amazing tree lot, and we're going to share that uh, experience with you next Saturday, um, all about buying a fresh Christmas tree and, and what goes into it and the love that goes into it and, and how you keep it fresh. But we all also want to talk about the other side of Christmas trees, and that's the fake the artificial, the faux Christmas tree. Now, did you ever grow up with an artificial tree? You know what? I never did. We had, We always had a live tree. We had, I mean, we had it all. I had a an artificial green tree that was flocked, and I remember my dad putting the different pieces together into what looked like a maypole, a mm-hmm. plastic maypole in the middle, and... You know, we'd have like these little parts that were little, you know, circular pieces that you would try to attach around the pole to make it somehow look like it had more branches inside. <laughs> but you could see right through the tree. Yeah, yeah. It, they, they, know, they used to not be They weren't so very good. good. Yeah, yeah. And then I married my husband and he had an artificial tree that he didn't want to get rid of because it was an investment. <laughs> Seriously, we're not going to. I've had this since college. We're not. Yeah. I'm going to get my money's worth. And finally, I think it was a year or two ago, I finally convinced him that he'd, got, he'd gotten in his investment out of it. What'd you do with it? Throw it out? I think we donated it. Oh, okay. You know, it was a nice enough tree, but you know. Anyway, so artificial trees, they have come a long way. I've had a pink tree. I've had a flocked, you know, artificial. I had a gold tree in my room growing up as a little girl, all artificial. There's a fun website called treetopia.com. Hmm. Have you heard of that? Treetopia. These guys specialize in artificial trees, everything from black to chocolate colors to the red, white, and blue tree to whatever it is to be kind of fun, the upside down tree. Hmm. But let's just first talk about Macy's in Union Square in San Francisco. They just put up their tree and it's artificial. Now, is that the first time they've ever done yeah. that? Really? Yeah. It's- and isn't the one at the Grove artificial as well? I don't know. I think it is. I think I've seen it go up in sections. Yeah, we were there just a couple weeks ago. Anyway, I know that there's a big debate about do you go forward, do you go fresh? But here's the thing. All right, so you wonder, well, what's more green, right? It really depends on where the tree came from. Now, a lot of these trees that are artificial, um, they come from other parts of the world where they they may not pay attention to chemicals as much and things. But also fresh trees... There's pesticides that they have to use on those trees. Not only that, but the amount of manpower and machinery to harvest those trees sometimes can outweigh. I know. The transportation, yeah, right? Yeah. So you really have to think about it. I mean, if you are a you know, a green wannabe person, it isn't um, clear cut because the fake trees that are made in these factories in Asia, they have some of that, you know, unsafe, oil-derived, pollution-causing PVC plastic, right? Mm. And then, um, you know, it ends up in a landfill and you worry about that. But then on the other hand, when you factor in the water and the pesticide, the energy, like you say, uh, to grow a fresh tree, um, it's, it's it, I'm in a pickle. So anyway, there's a lot of debate and, and there's a group called the National Christmas Tree Association. Mm-hmm. And they're a group uh, for tree growers, naturally, and they say that, hey, real trees are the way to go because they're natural. And it's all most of those real tree companies are not corporatized yet. They're all yes. family businesses, and you're really always helping local jobs. economies and giving and we love and creating that. jobs. We right? love that. I mean, that to me justifies the price tag because trees. I mean, the price of trees, and we, just as the price of fuel goes up because these trees are coming from Oregon and other places around the world. And um, anyway, it, it's going to cost you probably about fifty bucks to get a fresh tree. Well, yeah, and then and then you, I'm looking at Treetopia right now and. You know, some of these trees that are six, eight feet tall, 200 to yeah. $800 per tree. I yes. Mean, they're not cheap. So they're not cheap, but, but then you're going to have it for several years. For the years. rest of so your life, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, if if you like the red, white, and blue for the rest of your life, is there something that catches your eye there <laughs> on Treetopia? <laughs> yeah. They're kind of fun. Is they, there they one? Really, no, there's, I'm, the traditionals look great, but let me go to the colorful ones. Yeah. Those, those they have a Smurf tree. Um, it's it's for the, the wacky and if you want to just kind of, you know, not take it too seriously. Although they do have some traditional looking trees and, and there's other sites as well. But uh, so, yeah, having grown up with all of this artificial and then you want to have the smell of the fresh. So then the the, the, the debate becomes, well, maybe you have an artificial tree, but then you get garland and have a fresh wreath and things like that. And the pine cones, you know. 
You know what? For my vote, I'm I'm going fresh. You going fresh? Yeah. Although I do see some great ones. I, I'll tell you what I would do. I would consider the the uh, artificial trees for something a little smaller, maybe like a two or three footer, and then you could hang some of your Patricia Breen. Oh, you have Swarovski found crystal on there, and and really be you know be in high cotton. Now there. look at you. I mean, we were talking with this uh, ornament collector this past weekend, and so now you are all about Patricia. I'm an expert now. <laughs> yeah, what can I these say? are these are some of those ornaments that are. I mean, they don't. Do you sell. know I was actually inspired to buy one of those little today? We we got it over in Larchmont Village. It's this little uh, scene of a little skier going down a mountain and then coming up mechanically speaking. It's like one of those Christmas toys that we'll have forever in the family. And you wanted to get that because? Because I just, I, I was inspired by our, all of our Christmas talk. You because know? of the train Cre- and, and our crea- centerpiece. And, and creating memories. You know what I mean? It's, it's such a nice thing. The kids will always remember this stuff. Did so you get it? We did. You got the train? Yep. You did not. I did. Not the train, but the little skiers going Oh, the skier. Down. Oh, that's yeah. cute. All right. It's really cute. Well, so back, so back to the whole real tree versus artificial tree. The price of real trees is going to cost you anywhere between fifty and one hundred and twenty dollars for so, pr- approximately a six to eight foot tree, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, but true, you're going to have that memory of childhood, unless, of course, your childhood was like mine when we had an artificial <laughs> tree with you know flocking and so forth. But um, you know, hey, it's it's whatever brings the best memories to you. I think I think it's a totally personal choice. Uh, but there are a lot of people who are thinking about. Um, you know, going with an artificial tree. Right now, there are still more fresh trees sold than artificial. It's like maybe 70% fresh, the rest artificial. Mm -hmm. But, and then, of course, is the whole fire safety angle of it. These things will not burst into flames, theoretically. Is that true? Right. So, but, but isn't that, isn't that agent that they spray on the tree to keep it from burning carcinogenic? We don't, we don't know, do we? I don't know. Let me look into it. So, and you don't have to worry about watering it. I mean, there's, you know, I know it's, there's a lot to be thinking about, but maybe you don't want to have to even worry about it. You just go with your instinct and get a tree and you're done. I'm going to do that because I'm looking at some of their funky trees on here and they're orange or red, white, and blue or, you know, I don't know it's just, it's, it's not my bag. If you don't smell the, if you don't smell the smell of the pine needle in the house it doesn't for, the, smell. for the two or three weeks that you're having a Christmas celebration, what's the point? You might as well not have any have anything. Just call it a day. You know what I mean? That's that's my feeling. I'm gonna I'm taking a strong stance. I'm going with a real tree for the rest of time. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm doing. Well, anyway, so I there are a lot of options out there in terms of the artificials. So so check out Treetopia and check out some of the other sites that are there and, and see, you know, what, what works best for you. In terms of lighting the Christmas tree, and this is something we're gonna talk about later in the week too, but how do you begin to light your tree? Do you start at the top and go to the bottom, or do you start at the bottom and then work your way to the top? I'm going to tell you, this is this is a little something that I have have learned that t- to me works the best. And you that you go top down, you zigzag in each strand. You're not circling the tree, you're not going around it. You're only going from the top to the bottom, and then you're going back to the top and bottom, so that it's much easier to remove the lights after you're done with the Christmas holiday. Does that make sense? For me, I do the bottom to the top. Get out of here. Because, you, get out of here, you say potato. Because I love to have, because you have all these little outlets, right? Yeah. And that doesn't look very attractive at the top. Although you can work you your can, way at the I top. Hide and, and, and I hide them behind the star. Uh, oh, behind the star. Yeah, because okay. I have a big old star up there. So how many strands do you, do you connect on your tree? About four strands? No, no, no. Usually about six. Six strands? Oh, yeah. I like the lights. I like do the white lights. And that thing glistens like like crazy. You can't believe okay. it. <laughs> top, bottom, top. Well, and we have bubble lights. Have you ever had bubble lights? No. Uh-uh. That was another tradition of mine where they... The big round ones? They, they, and you can still get them. They're very nostalgic. They're they're kind of big bubbles with little tubes that come up and they're some kind of a, a dyed fluid inside. And then it as it heats up, they, they bubble. They're I, very cute. I can't, I've never seen this. They're very slide. cute. Okay. I, I know wait. that you can get them online. Look at bubble lights. All right. Here and I then go. they have a little clamper that you just click, you know, you attach to the branch. And I think it gives you a sense. Again, it's about your childhood memories. Sure right? is. You got to have them. You got to have the bubble lights. That, see, that's why I bought this little, you know, I've got this this little cute nativity scene thing that is from when I was a kid. And uh, and I had to get this thing that, that was like a, 
you know, a sweet. Have you ever seen those Swedish? Uh, yes, 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 what yes. What yes. called? The, well, it's it's like a whirly burly. It, it with the heat, the candle, the candles and turn the heat the, yep. spins it around. See, those are great. And that's a that's a Swedish German. It's like an tradition. Ad, and, and then we have an advent calendar, which nice. is really cute. It's, you know, countdown to Christmas twenty. Although you've been known days. to nibble your way through the calendar. Okay, before. that's enough. <laughs> that's enough out of you. Sometimes I nibble. It's okay. Well, when we mm-hmm. come back, we're going to talk about. It's been. I know the weather has been all over the map today. It's been so hot. But earlier this morning, it was 44 degrees. And I know for those of you who are from the East Coast, you're going to say, Cindy, what a wimp. But it felt cold to me. And I cranked on that heat. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great to have a fire going? And in this kitchen remodel, we're still finishing that. But I want you to help us. How do we get our fireplace ready? And what are some things that we can do to make it look more attractive? Oh, to the I've mantle? Got, uh, I've got some, get some ideas. You bet. Mantle, hearth, you name the whole it. thing. We'll take Artistic care of you. tiles. Absolutely. All right. All right. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole with Eric Stromer, and uh, we're going to have more fun for you right here on KFWB News Talk 980.